2020 is set to be the global cruise industry's most challenging year in living memory. With nations in lockdown, the vast majority of the global cruise fleet is sitting idle, devoid of passengers, with only their crews on board. With such an unprecedented shutdown, the future of the cruise industry is uncertain. A scary thought not just for the 30 million people who take to the seas annually for a cruise holiday, but also for those who rely on the cruise industry for their income. The 150 billion US dollar cruise industry accounts for over 50 billion dollars in wages and salaries worldwide, employing 1.17 million people. And with ships sitting empty around the world and no end in sight, people are starting to ask whether cruising can survive. But cruising is resilient. Throughout history, operators of passenger ships have faced huge challenges, ranging from shipwrecks to the unparalleled danger posed to the global travel industry during both world wars. Yet through each crisis, the cruise industry adapted to become stronger and more resilient. This pedigree goes some way to explaining why cruising executives seem so confident that the industry will not only survive 2020, but thrive. To discuss the resilience of cruising, I spoke with Bill Miller. It's the best vacation on earth, in my opinion. It'll come back slowly and it'll revive. With over 100 books published and hundreds of cruises under his belt, Bill is considered one of the foremost experts on passenger ships. Like me, he is confident that cruising will come back when the crisis passes. I, w I would think that if they would come back slowly. I don't think they're going to come back in an instant, record-breaking numbers. You know, I don't think they're going to be lining up at the docks, but they will have to adapt to that as well by offering, you know, very reasonable prices and incentives to get people to come back. While fleets of purpose-built cruise ships were rare before the 1970s, steam-powered ocean liners, the predecessors of cruise ships, have been a mode of transport since the 1830s, with sailing ships operating for hundreds of years before that. In 1912, global passenger shipping faced one of the most well-known crises. The loss of the RMS Titanic, which hit an iceberg and sank during its maiden voyage, was a huge blow to the industry. The Titanic disaster made headlines worldwide. The high death toll aboard the Titanic led people across the globe to question the safety of ocean travel. Yet the industry quickly adapted. Inquiries into the disaster recommended sweeping changes to safety aboard passenger ships, leading to the creation of the Safety of Life at Sea regulations, as well as the installation of lifeboats on board for all persons. Passenger confidence returned, and even the White Star Line, Titanic's operator, survived the aftermath of the disaster. People had no choice but to mm. return to ship because they couldn't travel. If you luxury between New York and London, you've got to take a ship at that time. Or if you're immigrating to America, which millions of people were doing, you had to take a ship. So it's a little bit different. But in the Depression, the 1930s, passenger liners took a hit. They returned slowly and they survived. After World War II, they resumed. After the Achille Lauro, which was a devastating thing to the cruise business in 1985, you know, several Mediterranean cruise lines collapsed because mm. the numbers of people fell. They felt the Mediterranean was a hotbed of terrorism and all sorts of things, and it eventually came back. The Italian cruise ship Achille Laro was hijacked during a cruise in October 1985. Overtaken by armed assailants, passengers were held hostage by the hijackers, who tragically killed one of the passengers during the ordeal. The incident raised serious questions about the safety of sea travel, which negatively impacted on the cruise industry. But cruise lines learned from the incident and quickly adapted the safety measures aboard their ships in response. Cruise lines intensified onboard security. It used to be you could just walk on ships and ports. There weren't security people. Now it's much more different. You know, the back end of the ship is much more secure where terrorists could get aboard. You have to, you know, sort of check in and check out every time. No visitors are allowed. That kind of thing has changed for forever. Updated safety measures have gradually increased over the years. And in recent times, cruise lines have faced the threat of pirates, leading to further improvements in onboard safety. I remember once being on the Queen Elizabeth and we were going through the Red Sea off of Somalia and you had to stay off the open decks after, after dark. You had to close the gates in your cabin, less light of the ship, and that there were crew members on the decks with binoculars yep. searching to see if there were terrorist ships out there. And everybody just adapted to that. And, you know, cruise passengers are funny. They find, I know this is going to sound silly, they find a little bit of excitement in that. You know, we, we had to do this and we had to do that. It's all stories to talk about, not only over dinner, but when you get home. Today's global transportation shutdown is often compared with the aftermath of September 11. While airlines were perhaps the most impacted, 
Cruise lines also noted a marked decrease in trade, as travellers opted to stay at home over safety fears in the post-9-11 world. The other problem at that time was people didn't want to fly. There was great worry about terrorism in the skies. And as you know, very often you fly to ships, you don't necessarily pick them up in your hometown. So that was a big negative on the whole thing. And people were just you know, uneasy with travel in general. 2020's global shutdown has been described as the biggest crisis since World War II. When the war broke out in 1939, ocean liners were the only viable way to travel, with pre-war air travel not yet fast enough or efficient enough to threaten the dominance of the ships. However, with the world's oceans becoming battlefields, passenger shipping services were dramatically reduced. Yet even in war times, shipping lines were able to adapt. Supporting their governments in the war effort, fleets of liners, including those from Cunard, P&O and the Orient Line, were requisitioned for use as both troop ships and hospital ships, with the government providing a subsidy to the shipping line to provide this vital service, an income that saved many of them from bankruptcy. Today, with land-based hospitals overwhelmed in some countries, cruise lines have already put their hands up to offer support during the 2020 crisis. Modern cruise lines are no strangers to adapting the onboard product for medical reasons. Norovirus is a contagious disease that causes vomiting and diarrhea, and while rare, it is known to occur on board cruise ships. Because of this, cruise lines adapted their procedures and passengers accepted the new normal of cruising. As you know, Chris, when they, when they used to have uh, outbreaks of norovirus, we adjusted immediately to the fact that we had to order only once from the menu. You know, there wasn't the passing around. Salt and peppers were taken off the table. You couldn't do the buffet or it had to be done very systematically. We adapt to whatever has to be done in order to make the vacation happen. And I'm sure that if we're gonna have to make changes like they're talking about boarding in groups now, um, showrooms not being as full anymore, that sort of thing, we'll adapt to it. There's no doubt that 2020 will be the most challenging year in living memory for many of us. And that has impacted business around the world. Cruise lines are being particularly hard hit. However, cruising is resilient and has faced many major crises before. Cruising supports not only the income of those working aboard the ship and at the cruise lines, but countless other individuals performing a variety of different jobs, all of whom will need employment once this current crisis passes and it is safe to travel again. You've got taxi drivers, bus tour operators, hotels, all connected to cruising, dockers, tugboats, all of that thing, fuel, getting fuel in local ports, all that is affected by this. Absolutely. It's a string effect that goes down and it's going to be very difficult to, do, to not let these ships come back. They have to come back and they'll want to come back. The Cruise Lines International Association says that 82% of cruisers are repeat guests, meaning loyalty to cruising is high. In a recent poll on my Instagram channel, 95% of respondents said that they would cruise again once it is safe to do so. They will have to modify the product as you and I know it. That will change, but it'll come back. Maybe the future cruising industry will look different to how it did at the start of 2020, but it will survive. Like countless past occasions, cruising will adapt and become safer and stronger as an industry for the future. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like these kinds of videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you're interested in maritime history, why not check out the history of the Carpathia, the ship that saved the Titanic survivors. Or if you're interested in the latest cruise news, check out my cruise news playlist. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope to see you on board.